Good morning, Year One, and welcome to our fourth lesson on geography. So today we're going to be actually doing some map work, and we're going to be finding out where hot and cold places are and how they differ. Now, some of this has been taken from a Twinkle resource. It's fairly obvious where it has been, and some of it has been created by me. So you're going to have a task at the end where you're going to be colouring in in light in blue and yellow where you think the hot and cold places are on the world or alternatively you can work with a grown-up and point to a map or a globe or anything like that to identify where hot and cold places are so to start with we've got a song this song will help you understand all the vocabulary we're going to be talking about and then we're going to have a quick look at that vocabulary afterwards so watch the video and then you'll be ready for us to go through the keywords for this lesson. So, the keywords are the Northern Hemisphere, which is this part of the world where we live, we're there in England, and the Southern Hemisphere, which is this area, and that includes Antarctica, where the penguin and the boy go in Lost and Found. And then you can probably read these, hot, cold, that shows temperatures, Cold is below freezing, we say, so that's minus 10. That's the kind of temperature, just a bit warmer, a bit colder than what we have in winter here. Then you've got climate zones, which don't matter too much. Weather does matter, though. Weather is what happens on a daily basis. And climate is what happens over a period of time. Finally, we've got habitats. Now, habitats is something we're going to cover much more detail in the fifth and final lesson. OK, so on we go. So if we have a look on this globe, the northern hemisphere is this section above this line here, which is the equator. Now, the equator doesn't really exist, but it's a point that is halfway between the North Pole and the South Pole. And then the southern hemisphere is all the area underneath the equator. <coughs> So, have a go at naming any country, continent or ocean in either the Northern or Southern Hemisphere. And if you can say which hemisphere it's in, even better. So just have a point if you can recognise anywhere. You might well recognise this place here. And a lot of people have links with this place here. OK. So once you've done that, I'm going to move on. Now we've got a second video here with the link here, which explains a lot more about what's weather like in the hot places of the world, what's weather like in the cold places of the world, the North and South Pole, and how it changes and how it's different from our country. You'll be able to think about yourself. So watch that video and then have a go at answering those questions. So now we've got a good understanding of what it's like and why the temperatures changes. Here is an idea of the differences between the Arctic and the Antarctic. So watch this video and then have a think about what the weather is like near the cold places of the world. And all of this information will help you answer that question. OK, after that, we've got a bite sized clip here that you need to copy and paste. And that will tell you what weather is like in hot places of the world near the equator. And if you want some more ideas, here's another video showing cold places in the world and the North Pole. And I want you to have a think about how the weather at the equator and the poles is different from the weather in our country. And have a chat with your parents about that. And then finally, I'll explain the task once you're ready. So, this is a key to the different climates in the world. We're interested at this stage in just this area here and here, which is the cold climates, and this tropical warm band here. So it's these sections here and here that are the hot places in the world. And you will notice that those cluster around the equator, which is more or less this line here. OK, 
So, what you're going to be doing is this. Here's some quick examples of cold places. Here's some quick examples of hot places. And you might want to think about what the animals live in the hot places. Here's a few examples. And what animals live in cold countries. Once you've had a good think about that, I want you to have a go at either pointing on this to where you think the cold areas are and pointing where you think the hot areas might be. And once you've done that, that pretty much is all we're aiming to do today. Now, if you want to print this and draw it, that's even better. But that is today's task. I'm sure you're going to do brilliantly. OK, see you again tomorrow.